heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I'm Lady Cheryl. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So I drilled drainage holes at the bottom of this bucket and the next thing I'm going to do is put a, about a two or three inch layer of wood chips because these sweet potatoes will be breaking down for four or five months and the uh, compost that I'm going to put on top of the wood chips will facilitate it breaking down faster so by the time I harvest the sweet potatoes I'm thinking that the wood chips will be broken down okay let's go get the wood chips okay guys I put a couple of inches of wood chips and you can see that white uh, fungus looking type of stuff on there that is mycorrhizal fungi naturally I used to have to buy it but now it just develops uh, when the chips wood chips decompose so that's a good thing. I don't have to buy it anymore. Okay, now I'm going to add compost. Okay, so now I have some rich compost at the bottom. The rest of it would be new potty mix. And I think I'll just fill this up and wait until tomorrow. It's going to rain tonight. And let it all get moistened real good. And then I'll pull the slips up tomorrow morning. Besides, it's about 7 o'clock and a little tight. Well... It's Memorial Day, Monday of the 25th, and I just emptied all of these containers. We had a lot of rain last night, so I just put these buckets out since they were new and didn't have holes drilled in them yet. I just placed them out in some other buckets, and I took them and I poured everything into here. This one and that one I'm leaving because I can water a few plants that are under the gazebo. But I want to share with you that my uh, ginger is up. And there's another pot of ginger. And I see right here that the shampoo ginger is up. Uh, a lot of the uh, beets, I've just moved this one toward the sun. I had it under the gazebo over here. And you can see the squash is doing really well. I see a few yellowing leaves. But actually, that could be the first leaves, you know, that they fall off anyway. And I know it's not the season to plant the spinach, but I'm gonna bring it in the house if I have to. And it's, it comes up slower than most seeds. I planted some more of the uh, uh, white hailstone radish. And I turned this around because this is getting a little yellow. Here is the uh, comfrey that I saw little small pieces. And if you look back on my videos, you'll see that it was just a few leaves. And uh, let me show you what the tiny Tim tomatoes look like. Let me go closer. When they start, um, you know, they are a determinant tomato. So once they produce all that the plant is going to produce, there's a few more here. And right there, the, the plants start to die back, so I'll pull them up and uh, put something else there. But uh, it's uh, real wet out here because, I mean, we had flash floods. Again, the tomatoes, like I said in another video, in the container are doing better than the ones in raised beds because we just got a lot of water. Uh, corn is coming up. I'm going to have to move this pretty soon. 
I don't know what when I'm gonna do it, guys. Cause here's some uh, blue rubber squash. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do it because we're gonna, it's supposed to have rain toward the end of the month. I want you to look at this plant right here. You will see some large tomato, or at least I see one ripening at the bottom, and the leaves are just real yellow. Can't help it. I'm not complaining because my good stuff outweigh the bad. This variety is taking up to date. It was taking the rain better. I gotta go ahead and read my journal. And I probably won't plant these anymore in uh, raised containers. I'll plant this one to the left, but not this one over here to the right. Um, let me walk over here and let you see. You know, robins are really singing this morning. They have, they are happy because the sun is coming out. <sighs> let me get through here and let you see how nice this tomato plant is. I don't see any yellow in the leaves. Get my phone in here and see that big tomato right there. So yeah, this one I'm gonna plant again. Uh, uh, real wet out here, I gotta be careful. This bed is doing well, maybe because the plants weren't, are not as old as. For a minute, I thought this was a stink bug, guys. Let me show you, I was tripping. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot of tomatoes in the emergency garden. Look at all of those. That's why I say I can't be mad if one plant is yellowing or two plants are yellowing because just look at all of this goodness. And the people that this that are going to get this are going to be so, so happy. I'm going to go into the greenhouse and check everything out in there. Greenhouse. Everything is looking good so far. All the tomatoes are hanging on and what I did was I pruned the majority of the leaves because right now all I'm trying to do is get these kind of big and ripe enough where I can pull them off. You can see the onion scraps are down here. It smells like onions are dehydrated in here which is good because that would disguise the scent of the uh, tomatoes for the hornworm. The beans are doing good in the hanging baskets. Look lovely they're flowering everywhere so we'll be having a harvest of beans very soon i'm going to show you the tomatoes on this side that i couldn't show you so i left anything that i thought would produce and you can look here and see all of the transplants of the blue hover squash surrounding by the tomato scraps to disguise the scent if you've ever grown them from seeds or even a transplant, you'll know that the squash uh, seedlings are very pungent. And that's why the squash bugs go, know where to go. They, they tune into that scent and they follow it. And then they come and, and attack it and then they're bored into the uh, stems of the vines. And once they get inside, some people try to inject them with BT, some people try to surgically remove them i don't oh you know what guys i forgot to tell you the other day i found another butternut squash you remember in the other video i only had two well i found another one that one right there by the onion and i planted it and i saw another one out here the other day let's go over here and look at this corn doesn't it look wonderful and here's another butternut squash i will prick out and transplant and I gotta be careful so I don't disturb the roots of the corn. If someone asked me a question or something or they mentioned that they tried to grow corn in the container and they said it didn't do very well. You have to feed them a lot of nitrogen and I know I'm gonna have another butternut squash come up. So I know I did the right thing. I wasn't gonna waste time uh, waiting for them to um, germinate when I could be germinating all of this corn. These four squash in this container, I'm going to fill potting mix on this side and on this side, and I haven't done it yet, and I will later today during the break in the rain. And the reason why I haven't done it yet is because I gotta go to Home Depot and pick up my order at curbside delivery. And then I have eight plants here. I'm only gonna leave three or four, and the other four will go where the tomatoes are once they get pulled. And the Swiss chard is doing well over here. And I'm just gonna grow it in this container. I may prick out some, I'm not sure. And now, here's Pepper Place. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. 
peppers. All to be given away. Looking good. I'm gonna have to secure this one to this stake right here. You need to see the flowers. I'll come back out here and tie up any loose ends so that they can get supported. Because when that rain comes, guys, it comes in a flash. When I opened up my back door, that leaf looked yellow, but it's not. When I opened up my back door, I mean the water just swooshed toward me. <laughs> so that's what they mean by flash floods. Because you'll get a whole lot of rain, a quick downpour in with high winds that will push it. Yeah, so I think I'm going to have some fried green tomatoes today. Loving these. Loving these. Loving these. Okay. So, let's move on to something else. Because I have to check everything out before it starts raining. That's okay. Yeah. Let me share share with you what this is. This is with my finger. This is purslane. Wild purslane. People think it's a weed. And a lot of things people think are weeds are not actually weeds. But this purslane has more omega-3 and nutrition in it than, than salmon. So I pull these up, I, well, I pinch them off, and I put them in my salad. And the sugar cane looks good. I got peas for the emergency garden, they're looking wonderful. They're in, a, they're in pots, so they're draining well. And I think my big tree, black turkey big tree, I'm competing with the robins. I think my black turkey big tree is, um, Exploding with rope. I'm so excited. Yes. Now I'm going to go check on one more thing. And that is the aphids that I blasted off with water and see how that apple tree is doing. Here is the tree that I treated for the aphids. Uh, let's see what this is. It's a little residual there. Not bad. Okay, I'm going to pick up my sprayer. And spray again. And if you see an ant, there's some aphids still alive. So I just smashed that ant. But for the most part, the weeds look much better than they did yesterday. Let me see. I see a little bit right there. I shared my method of uh, killing the aphids by drowning them in on, on a Facebook page. And some smart Alex said, you didn't kill them. Okay, well, maybe I didn't kill them all, but I'm sure a lot of them have fallen down and drowned and my leaves are not curling real bad like they were, nor do you see those big clusters of aphids. A few right here. I'm gonna blast them off in a minute. In between the rain, I come out and I check. Check what I started and I come back and I show you what I've done. And for all the people that say, well, leave it to nature. Leave it to nature. Okay, well, you leave it to nature. But I want my apples. I want these. I don't want this tree to be sucked all up with and don't send the nutrition from the leaves and branches to the apples and just let the, 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 the aphids win. No. I want my apples. See them? I want my apples. So I'm going to blast the aphids off. And for all of you that don't believe in doing anything to protect your fruit trees, that's you, baby. That's you. Do your, You do you, and I do me. Hey, everybody. It's Lady Cheryl here. I'm sitting in the parking lot of Home Depot because I have an order of potty mix to uh, pick up so that I can go home in between the rain 
to plant my sweet potato slips. And uh, I just want to share with you, I think I have before, that they have a wonderful, and I've got this off my nose because nobody in the car right now, but they have a wonderful um, curbside pickup. They have uh, designated uh, about three or four rows of the parking uh, close to the store so that you can just pick up your order. And, uh, they put it in the car. Several people will sign off. I think I mentioned that in the video, so if I did, I'll cut it out. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I usually try to use mostly compost, but as you guys know, that I ran out of compost with all the extra um, food that I'm growing uh, to donate. So, uh, okay, they're back with part of the order, so let me open the door. It's open. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, they put everything in the car for you. Um, they brought half of it out, and now they're getting ready to get the other one in. Uh, then I'll be on my way back home. And uh, I always take uh, Clorox wipes with bleach and uh, wipe everything down. Okay. See you when I get home. I had to do a voiceover, guys, because my neighbors are hammering. I guess they're building something. And I'm not complaining because... Um, they're real good neighbors. Um, I just want to share with you in these two 26 gallon totes, I put those 20, uh, sweet potato slips in there because I needed to keep them going until I got my order in of my big blue containers that are 17 gallons that I showed you in the beginning of the video. So today, after I went to Home Depot, I scooped up the best I could these uh, slips so that I can distribute some of them out of their temporary home into the blue buckets with compost, wood chips, and potty mix. So what you see me doing here is with my left hand, because I'm holding the camera, the phone, with my right hand, and I am digging up some of the uh, sweet potato slips, and I'm smoothing the soil uh, around them and here I'm looking at them and I'm thinking well it's still too many in this container so I'm pulling up can't, gently trying not to disturb the roots too much but even if you do sweet potato slips are very easily moved around and so you can see I'm moving another one here and putting it into this saucer so I could take it around to my patio and put them in the other containers that I've gotten ready and so I'm just trying to make up my mind if I'm going to move that one. And I did. I moved it toward the center so they won't be real crowded. But it's a lot of soil in this uh, bucket. So I think it can handle it. You don't want to put too many slips in the container because you'll get a lot of small tubers. But my grandkids like the small ones, so if it's a little crowded, it's okay. But if you remember in my previous video about uh, the emergency garden, I told you that I'm trying to train these vines to go up the trellis so they won't be everywhere. But I will be uh, trimming some of the vines off. These little heart-shaped vines are my favorite. They are from the Beauregard sweet potatoes, and I cook them just like spinach. I saute them with olive oil and a little onion, a little garlic, and they are really, really delicious. I have to show you this. Here are the three tubs. One, two, three, and I'm putting four tubers in each one. Three is enough, but I have them, and I don't want to use another um, bucket for sweet potatoes because that'll make me have five, so I'm going to put the rest of these little rooted slips because I need the rest of my containers for corn. So, uh, now let me show you what I have left. I have these one, two, three, four to put in here. Let me see if I can. There's my shovel. Dig a hole kind of deep and get a big one there. That's kind of deep. 
that's deeper than my whole hand so I'll put a big one there so I'll take this one and stand it up right in that hole push the roots down at the bottom if you're starting off with baby slits try to go about 10 to 12 inches down okay so I'm pressing it down getting all the air pockets out that looks good okay scoop it up drop it in the hole really nice start filling it up and I'm not worried about the rain this leaf look a little jacked up so I'm gonna take it off the rain will uh, wash the leaves off and we got more rain in the forecast as I said until the end of the month crazy weather It's a big hole, so I need to try to get the woo, get the biggest one. I think it's right here. There we go. We're going to stick that down in there, more close to this side, so I can put another one over here. Fill it in. Press it down. Since I started making YouTube videos... <laughs> my dexterity has gotten even better than when I was doing a lot of hair with my left hand. Look, and I'm right-handed. Okay, I'm making another hole. I'm going to scoop this up right here. Get it down in there real deep. Pick up this soil. Get it in here. Press down. Everything is pressed down. And that's it. So I'm going to let these grow until um, we are expected to get a frost. And then I will dig them up. And that will probably be about November. But in the meantime, when I do updates, I will bring these back and let you see how all three of the containers are doing. The blue ones. And all of the two... 26 gallon totes okay a few days ago i told you guys i was um looking for something that i could companion plant the sweet potatoes and i decided on two things and one is a uh, herb it's called summer savory and uh it's well known to be used in european and american dishes but i'm going to take these seeds that i bought from ebay and I'm going to just put a little of it right around here and um, and let them grow up with the uh, sweet potatoes. And I'm not going to videotape me doing that because it's too difficult. They're very, very tiny. You can't really even see them. You saw one right there maybe. It's like it's a little dust. And then I just patted them in. I didn't really cover them up that much. Okay. From another merchant on eBay, I ordered Blue Lake, I think it's 274 bush beans. So as these vines grow up and out, um, bush beans is a good uh, companion plant for them. So, it's not that many beans. I think it's about 25. And I'm only going to put about five in each one. And I'll do that off camera. But I'll bring you back in a few days when they come up. And let you see how it turned out. Now, I want to tell you that usually I soak my beans for a few hours. But because the ground uh, is so damp and humid, humid out here. Uh, and we're getting a whole lot of more rain. I'm just going to directly sow them. Okay? Alright. Okay, I want to close this video out by sharing with you the same type of beans that I just planted, but here they are uh, a pole type bean. And I hope you can hear me because there's an airplane fly, uh, flying over. But as you can see here, these beans are uh, making flowers and I will be harvesting green beans very soon. So this is uh, wonderful to see. 
lots of flowers over here. But the only problem is if you look close at the bottom, they're beginning to yellow because of too much rain. But that's okay. We'll just pull those leaves off and, uh, and take what we can get. Because very soon, there won't be any rain in my area during the summer. I'm uh, just going to show you real quick that my lettuce is bolting. You see here? And look at this real tall one here. It's getting ready to create flowers. And that's the butter crunch lettuce. And it's delicious. So I'm going to let it uh, flower and collect the seeds. Fall. This concludes this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now. The end.